This is the 11th part of a series of video tutorials that goes through a packet tracer activity intended as a sort of routing and switching essentials final for the new Cisco CCNA 5.0 curriculum. I created this activity for my students and it has a total of nine steps and we're on step seven. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Step seven, we're going to configure R2, router R2, which is our edge router between our network, routers R1, R2, and R3, and our VLANs and our hosts over here, and the internet which exists here. You can see this internet cloud. So R2 is the edge router between us and the internet. So this is the router that we're going to configure network address translation on. And we want to translate from our public addresses on our public serial 010 interface, that's public facing, to our private addresses on our private VLANs. And so that's what we're going to do. In step 7 it says configure static and dynamic NAT on R2. So we're going to start that right now. Now number 1, we want to configure a static NAT rule that's going to translate 209.165.201.65 to the local web server at 192.168.35.252. So here's our web server down here, 192.168.35.252, and we want to translate from this private address to a public address, and it's listed right here as well, 209.165.201.65. So when users on the internet put in this IP address, it contacts our router and then our router basically translates it to the web server's address over here and so then people can visit our web server from outside using this public address so let's configure that first so what I'll do is I'll go into R2 and we'll go to global config mode and we'll say IP NAT put in a question mark and we'll say inside this is going to be inside and we'll put another question mark and source and the source could be a uh, access list or it could be a static entry and that's what we're going to do is a static entry so I'll put in static so IP NAT inside source static let's put in another space and a question mark and you can see we have some choices here inside local IP address in the format a.b.c.d. So that's easy. So that is 192.168. We can see it right here. 35.252. I can see it poking out the bottom here. That's the web server. So 35.252. And then we'll put a space and another question mark. And now it says the inside global IP address. Well, the inside global IP address is the public address that we want to use that's going to be on this outside interface right here. It's called the inside global because this is the inside router, and these are the outside routers. So this is the inside router. It's on our network, and this is the global interface, and that's going to be 209.165.201.65. So according to the instructions. Right, that looks good and we'll just hit enter and that sets up our NAT rule our static NAT translation which is fine and now that we have the static NAT translation in place we have to tell NAT which interfaces are going to be our inside interfaces and which one interface is going to be our outside interface so serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 0 slash 1 are our inside interfaces and 0 1 0 is our outside interface so we'll do that right now. So I'll say interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 0 and that's going to be IP NAT outside since that's our outside facing interface and then 0 slash 0 slash 0 there it is is our inside interface and we have another inside interface at serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 also do that as IP net inside. So now we've set that up and these are inside, that's our outside. We have our rule that translates from this private address to the public address that we've specified. And so now if we go to this PC on the internet and 
we put in that IP address, we should be able to reach the web server. And let's see if we can. So we'll put in 209.165.201.65 and press go. And you can see, welcome to danscourses.com. Thanks for dropping by. We reached the web server. So obviously it's being translated. We can look in R2 and actually see the translation by saying show IP NAT tran, I'll hit tab, show IP NAT translations, and you can see it's being translated. So there's the translation inside global 209.165.201.65 to the inside local 192.168.35.252. And so that worked out really well. So now that that's done, we have finished. We have finished number one, number two, and number three, because we set up our inside and outside interfaces. Now we need to configure a NAT pool named R2 NAT pool for 209.165.201.66 through 209.165.201.69. And this is an error here. It says 66 through 66. And I fixed it in the latest version that I've posted to my website. But you can see also over here, if you look at this box, that it's supposed to be 209.165.201.66 through 69. So that's the NAT pool that we need to create. So it's a pool of public addresses that we need to create first. The public addresses that we want to use that we're going to translate from our private network to the public. So we'll say comp t ip nat pool and then we need to put in the name of the nat pool requested in the instructions which is r2 nat pool in all caps and then if we put a question mark it tells us what to put next the starting IP address so if we look at the instructions it says the starting address is 66 and it's going to go through 69 even though the instructions here are incorrect the instructions say here 66 through 69 so we'll put in 209.165.201.66 and then a space and then the ending address which is 209.165.201.69 so 66 through 69 and we hit enter and it's an incomplete command, so I'll do an up arrow and put a space and a question mark to see what we missed. Ah, we need our net mask. So net mask, and then the net mask, which was, let's see in our instructions. The instruction says, configure a NAT pool named R4 this. Make the net mask as close as possible to masking just those addresses. Okay, interesting. So if we want to mask just 66 through 69, then we probably want to start with a network at 64 and make the network size 8, meaning 64 through 71. And to make a network size 8, you need to use, uh, and that goes from, let's say, 64 to 71, you need to use this net mask. 255.255.255.248. Now, why did I choose 255, 255, 255, 248? Well, 248, if we look at it in binary, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. That is 248 in binary. And if we look at the last borrowed bit, the 1 here is in the 8th place. So that means the networks will go up by 8. I like to call this last borrowed bit, this last 1, the magic number. And it's in the 8th place. So that means the networks go up by 8. So the networks would be 209.165.201.0, the next network 209.165.201.8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 64, and the next one would be 72. So 64 to 71. So that is the correct net mask. So now we have our NAT pool. And the NAT pool is just going to, it's going to be, it's going to mask and it's going to cover addresses basically 64 through 71. So 66 through 69 will be covered by those. Now we need two access lists 
that will permit two of our LANs. We're going to make an access list called 15, or named 15, number 15 that is, and it's going to permit the 15 network, and we're going to do access list number 25, both standard ACLs, and this one will permit the 25 network. So that should be pretty easy. We'll just say ACC tab access list 15 permit 192.168.15.0.0.0.255 and same thing except this one's for 25 and it's access list 25. So we have two access lists and now all we need is two rules IPNAT inside that maps the access list 15 with our NAT pool and we're going to overload it so that it's a port address translation so we'll do that next so we'll say IPNAT inside space question mark source okay and we put a question mark you have two choices you can either do static or list and we have an access list so we'll do list 15 space and then a question mark and then the pool okay uh, pool pool and the name of our pool r2 nat pool and then a space and a question mark and then overload so we'll say overload and that's it IP nat inside it's going to basically translate from source list 15 access list 15 to one of the addresses in our NAT pool, uh, basically cycle through the addresses in our NAT pool, and we're going to overload it. And I believe it said with overload. So now we'll do the same thing, IP NAT inside, source list 15. This time it'll be source list 25. And there we go. So that's it. So now we have our two rules. We have our access list and we had our NAT pool and it's done. Um, we should be able to see translations as we go out to this PC on the internet. So we should be able to go to let's say PC1 here, go to desktop, to the command prompt, and ping 209.165, I'll ping the web server, .201.250 see if this will work. Alright, there's a reply. We were able to ping. Beautiful. And we can do the same thing from PC2. So go to desktop, command prompt, and ping. In a tech web server, there we go. So we've pinged twice. And now all we need to do is look at our translations on R2 to see if it worked. So we'll say control C and then show IPNAT translations and you can see all the translations happening you can see that they're happening from local address 15 on the 15 network and then the second host was on the 25 network 192.168.25 and you can see they're being translated to the public addresses 66 so that looks pretty good so it looks like we're done with that part and now in the next part we're going to do step 8, which is configure access lists on R2.